All right, y'all, welcome back to Coming Arms Channel. Okay, so of course, today's costume theme is Stargate SG-1. Now, if you guys haven't seen this show in its entirety, you should probably stop being so lame, I'm gonna be honest. But today we are checking out a video from Popo Medic. You guys already know Popo Medic does some pretty interesting stuff. He always covers some really niche topics. Like some are pretty well known, some a lot of people haven't heard about. And I think this is probably gonna be one of those stories. So this is about a Navy SEAL turned serial killer. And with a title like that, it's pretty much impossible to not be interested in it. I mean, this is stuff that they literally make TV shows and documentaries about, but should be cool. It's about 12 minutes long. So let's get right into it. Saturday, May 25th, 2002. A former Navy SEAL it back. dishonorably discharged for insubordination and a history of going AWOL turned to a life of crime with his toxic and equally psychotic wife. And together, oh a couple burglarized local businesses, internationally smuggled narcotics, and went on a demented rampage to fuel an adrenaline addiction that was quickly spiraling out of control. Yeah, so from what I've noticed, AWOL is a pretty good precursor to these kinds of lifestyles. If you guys don't know, AWOL is absent without leave. Uh, basically, people who just don't show up for work in the military, which obviously you can understand the military doesn't really appreciate that. But yeah, this is uh, sounding like a more modern Bonnie and Clyde, but I guess with like more drugs. Until inevitably graduating to murder. I went to uh, I went through buds with a sociopath. The yeah. honor man of my buds class is still in jail for chopping people up and then disposing of their bodies with his. Oh, dude! Wife. Really? I don't know how I forgot that. I totally remember hearing about this on the the Joe Rogan podcast, but I guess I just never looked into it. No. Fantastic music. <laughs> In 1996, 19-year-old high school swim champion Benjamin Seifert enlists in the United States Navy with his sights set on becoming a special operator under one of the world's most okay. elite fighting forces, the Navy SEALs. That and was after cool. attending basic training, Seifert attended basic underwater demolition SEAL training. And was that Marine Corps boot camp? One of the world's training, Seifert attended basic <laughs> underwater okay. demolition SEAL training and absolutely crushed it and was even dubbed by his instructors as one of the fastest and strongest students in the program. And after Damn. six hellish months, Seifert completed BUDS and graduated with class 212 in 1997 and even received the class's highest graduation honor and was given the nod as the class's honor man. Damn, Shortly okay. after completing BUDS, Seifert, like most team guys, celebrated hard. And one party in particular <laughs> would vastly alter the trajectory of his life after hooking up with 19 year old Erica Grace. And just like him, Erica was ambitious, athletic. She was very tan, not Jesus. Is she from New Jersey? <laughs> like him, Erica was ambitious, athletic, and all about show. The former collegiate basketball player and the Navy SEAL became inseparable, absolutely fueling each other's hmm. egos. Erica, in her social life, would often boast about her Navy SEAL boyfriend. And Ben thrived in Eric's godlike perception she held for him. The two narcissists found validation in one another. And after just a few weeks of dating, the two eloped and got married at the Silver Bells Damn. Chapel in Las Vegas. And That's pretty standard for the U.S. military, let's be real. Shortly after, having become all consumed by Erica, Ben began to disassociate himself from the teams. He no longer gave a mm. shit about the Navy. And all he <laughs> wanted to do was spend time with Erica. And not even a few weeks after their marriage, Ben Seifert was court-martialed and dishonorably discharged from Whoa. the Navy in 1998. Wait, what did he do? For reasons such as insubordination and reportedly going AWOL on multiple oh, occasions. Yeah, duh. And by his peers, That'll do he it. was deemed mentally unstable. And mm -hmm. instead of taking a step back and rethinking her relationship with Ben, Erica fully embraced and even celebrated Ben's darker side. And she so I've definitely seen a lot of marriages go like pretty south, you know, in the military, but usually there's like a deployment or like a long training exercise involved even, but it seems like that wasn't really factored in here from what I'm understanding. Like, geez, that's going downhill very, very quickly. He began to egg him on. After Ben's discharge, the two felt liberated and moved to Erica's hometown of Altoona, Pennsylvania, where Erica started her Pennsylvania. own business, opening a local scrapbooking store. Who the fuck opens a scrap of <laughs> yeah. store? Fucking lock her up after committing. Uh, yes, dude. Like what? Like what could you sell in, in like a whole store dedicated to scrapbooking? What? The disturbing crime of scrapbooking. 
couple turned to petty crime, setting up an eBay store full of stolen merchandise and promotional items from restaurants that two had burglarized. And many of the wow. items were bizarrely from Hooters. And the couple reportedly earned close to $3,000 a week fencing stolen goods on eBay. The money okay. earned through the store was used to finance the couple's bad habits, from bar hopping to the use of narcotics which the couple would obtain and smuggle back to the United States from South America. Oh my gosh. Then they're really trying to get the good stuff, huh? When they're back stateside, it was back to burglaries, doing whatever they could to get a dose of adrenaline, including Ben's obsession with purposefully trying to get pulled over just to attempt to evade police. Freaking Hooters, Reportedly man. doing things such as driving upwards of 150 miles per hour, initiating full-blown police pursuits, of which he always escaped. And Erica okay. became manic impulsively buying jewelry, pet snakes, and strangely growing OCD over her eccentric Hooters memorabilia. <laughs> yeah, I was noticing, because before it said like Atlanta, Georgia, I think. Now it's Fairfax, Virginia. So unless they're like, I don't know, like I, I don't know what the Hooters equivalent of bar hopping would be, but unless you're doing something like that, yeah, just like buying all this Hooters merch is just really kind of strange. But yeah, oh my gosh, like, I don't know what is going on, but... Uh, yeah, when you have these two types of individuals that have their own kind of personal stuff going on, then yeah, you can imagine some pretty crazy stuff's gonna go down. Erica's friends even grew concerned as Erica became unrecognizable and the debauchery and mayhem which defined the Seifert's relationship began to peak. Instead of breaking into the restaurants late at night, the couple began to arm themselves and hit the chains earlier in the day. Why Hooters? After closing time, pushing the envelope. Jeez. Almost looking for a potential robbery situation. And inch oh by gosh. inch, the Seafrits were on a warpath to get their kicks off some artificially induced violence. In 2002, get that Hooters. the Seafrits rented a condo. Man, I gotta say, those curly fries are good, but they're not that good. So in Ocean City, <laughs> with full intentions of graduating with murder. The two would spend the afternoons at the beach day drinking and the nights at the bars Hell yeah. and the clubs while attempting to find their victims. And on Jeez. May 24th, the Seifritz failed to produce the exact change needed for the bus ride. Nearby passengers and couple Joshua Ford and Martha Crutchley covered the fare. The couples okay. headed off and made plans to meet up and go out later that night. And around 11 p.m. the night of the 24th, the couples made their way to Secrets Nightclub. Where's this going? Oh my God. Joshua Ford and Ben bonded over the military as Martha Crutchley and Erica gossiped over shots of tequila. And after last <laughs> call, the Seifritz invited the couple back to their condo at the Rainbow. They continued the party, rolled spliffs in the hot tub, and everything was cool. I, I was going to pause it there, but I'll wait. Until Erica. The stock footage that this guy uses is, is pretty incredible. Like, it really immerses me in the story. Uh, out of nowhere, snapped, claiming that her purse was missing from inside the condo, placing the blame on Joshua and Martha. Ben Bro. pulled out a 357 Magnum and demanded that they give back the purse, at which point the petrified couple retreated into the bathroom, locking the door behind. Uh-oh. Screw that. Tackle her out of the Erica way. Erica picked up the phone and dialed 911, informing dispatchers of some type of burglary scenario. Mr. 911, do you have an emergency? Yes, I have an emergency at my apartment. Um, there are people in my house who I don't know, and my purse is suddenly missing. And I'm oh man, she is really crazy. Yeah. Okay, people in your apartment at this time? Yes. I'll connect you to the police. Stay on the line. Hey. What? I'm... I'm upstairs in a bedroom where they don't know where I am. Okay, I'll connect you to the police. But before disclosing her address, Erica disconnected the line. What is going and exactly on? Exactly what happened next is only known to Ben and Erica Seifert. But what is known hmm. is that Joshua Ford was shot through the bathroom door, and several more shots rang out after Ben kicked down the door altogether. And Joshua Ford and Martha Crutchley were never seen again. That's messed up, man. Like, they paid for the bus fare. Then that happens to them. Psychos, man.
Man, it goes to show you never really know people. Like, you're paying for their bus fare. They seem like a cool couple. You go chilling with them. And then, yeah, you get locked in the bathroom. And they think you're, like, stealing from them. It's pretty crazy. Like, how fast a night can turn like that. The successful insurance executive and mortgage broker were both reported missing by their co-workers back in Virginia. Detectives from Motion City Police Department jumped on the case and began pursuing leads from witnesses at Secrets Nightclub. Meanwhile, the Seafrits conferred and evaluated their performance of what they did right and what they did wrong, what such the as heck? the bogus 911 call to transmit a fake self-defense alibi. And eager to do it all over again, the couple was on damage control, covering their track. I don't think it's really going to fly for self-defense when, you know, they're gone and people can't find them and all of a sudden you're not really speaking up about it anymore. Sterilizing the crime scene and replacing the bullet-ridden bathroom door. And in order to remove the bodies from the high-rise condo, what? the psychotic couple turned to the barbaric practices of dismembering. They replaced the door? Jeez. The Seafritz set out to find their next victims, sticking to the same plan. While wearing Joshua Jeez. Ford's ring around her neck, Ben and Erica found their next victims. Couple Melissa Sealing really? and Justin Tanya. They lured the couple back to the rainbow and fired up the hot tub. However, Sealing and Todd Wright left the condo before Erica tried to play another sadistic game of who stole my purse. Oh after my realizing gosh. that something was wildly off about Ben and Erica. By morning, the Ocean City Police Department, on the search for the missing Virginia couple, posted flyers all over town, hmm. leaving Ben and Erica with serious heat and no other options but to get out of town. They hit Secrets Nightclub one last time before hitting a Hooters on the way out of town and trip. I always kind of wonder what happens to these businesses because I feel like once this story gets out, there's not really a whole lot you can do to try and salvage that business. I mean, it really kind of ruins that image when you have this crazy murder story coming out about these individuals coming here to try and like look for victims and whatnot. Before hitting a Hooters on the way out of town and tripping a silent alarm. Why did they go to Hooters again? Chill with the Hooters, jeez. <laughs> That's pretty nice Hooters though. Damn, okay. Ben played so. it cool and kept his mouth shut. Erica, Shoulder holster. however, lashed out at officers, demanding that they open her purse and give her a Xanax. The officers obliged <laughs> and discovered five oh. casings of 38, as well as two Virginia driver's licenses for a Joshua Ford and a Martha Crutchley. Detectives were notified Damn. and officers were informed to get to the couple's rental condo at the Rainbow in the event the sea freights were holding Joshua and Martha hostage. And under exigent circumstances, officers booted the door and hmm. inside the rental, police found suspicious items within. The condo was secured as a crime scene and the sea were brought in for questioning. Like them, presented that, with the evidence that's jacked up they kept like the freaking ring and the driver's licenses man like yeah Benz. i mean they're crazy erica made a cold confession claiming that ben committed the murders and that she was simply in fear for her life due to the fact that her husband had navy seal friends bro ben on the other hand claimed that he was sleeping in the couple's jeep and when he returned upstairs he witnessed the crime scene and felt as though he had no choice but to help erica out of the situation both partners flipped and continued to throw each other under the bus and at the crime scene, investigators yes. demoed the bathroom vanity and found blood in the towel grout. Samples were taken and examined hmm. and determined to be a DNA hit on both victims. In June Damn. of 2002, a grand jury handed down a 13-count indictment against both Benjamin and Erica Seafrit, and the case became a media spectacle. The hmm. noble seal and the seemingly good girl shocked the world with the brutality of their crimes. On June 11th of 2002, Erica Seafrit was convicted and sentenced to life in prison, plus 20 years. Damn, okay. On April 9th, 2003, Ben Seafrit was convicted and sentenced to 38 years in prison. Hmm. And in April of this year, Ben applied for and was denied parole and has a mandatory release date of 2030. Okay, damn. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. There's a lot more. Hey, and if you guys aren't subscribed to my channel, for okay, let's go ahead. 
definitely go and subscribe to his channel because he's got some fantastic stuff. I'll put the original video in the description so you guys can go over and do that. But of course, if you guys like the reaction, definitely feel free to subscribe down below, especially if you wanna see more of the, uh, the costume stuff. And also, if you guys wanna support the channel, you can become a channel member or you can head down to the link in the video description for the Patreon so you can support the channel that way. But I mean, I appreciate if you guys subscribe, even if you guys just come back and comment, let me know what you guys think about the videos. I appreciate that as well. There's also a new option. You guys might see this icon. Actually, I put over the, the P90, but basically that allows you to donate to the channel. So if you guys wanna do that, I appreciate it as well. But yeah, this was a fantastic video. Yeah, I did hear about this on the Joe Rogan podcast, but I never followed up. I mean, those podcasts are always just fantastic anyway, so you kind of just have to finish it at that point. But yeah, I did hear a little bit about it. I didn't know like how it went down at all. Like they kind of skimmed over the, the small details of the investigation. But yeah, it seems like it went down pretty quick. But I don't get the obsession with like, with Hooters. I mean, like, I guess if you're off your rocker, if you're like insane, then you'll get obsessed with anything. But yeah, Hooters, especially collecting like Hooters merch, just weird. Like the food's not that great. And the environment's kind of weird. Like it's just a weird environment to try and enjoy food, you know? I don't know. I think they got canceled recently too, but yeah, very cool video. Um, I, I mean, I, I, cool video, not so cool a story. I mean, these guys were freaking nuts. And unfortunately, you know, you go and you have these individuals that are trying to be nice and pay for the bus fare. And then it turns into like the worst night of their lives. And yeah, I don't know. It's, um, it's really weird hearing these sorts of stories, especially for people who are previously in the military turning to things like this. Again, like I've seen people kind of go into a downward spiral after they go AWOL and whatnot, or maybe after they get caught doing drugs. But like, this is just something you don't like to see. I mean, if you're in the military, you don't like to see this, uh, understandably. I mean, if you're not in the military, you probably don't like to see this either. Uh, but yeah, it feels weird seeing like one of your, you know, your prior brothers or sisters doing something like this freaking crazy. But yeah, definitely a uh, an interesting video. And uh, again, there's a lot of very interesting stories on the Popo Medic channel. So definitely go and show him his supports. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. If you guys have any other details to add, let me know, of course, down below. Or if you have any other interesting stories like this to recommend, then definitely recommend that down below. Or you can head over to the Discord and recommend them there. But yeah, that is it for this video. I'll see y'all in the next one.